Lightyear. Now I remember back when this project was officially announced and having mixed opinions on it really and feeling a little bit confused as to what it was going to be. Of course the title of it just appeared as Lightyear but there were just a few questions as to what direction it was going to go in and what the story will involve. I thought to myself it could be either some origins of the toy, a bit like how the opening prologue of Toy Story 2 was, or that it's about a person who inspired the toy. That's what I think confused a lot of people really. But there's another interesting twist. It's actually not a person. It's actually a film character that the character of Andy would have watched when he was young. Hence why it kind of goes full circle when he has his motor birthday present. And this connection was explained in the opening title card of the film and it said, in 1995 a boy named Andy got a Buzz Lightyear toy for his birthday. It was from his favourite movie. This is that movie. So I thought it would be an interesting angle this because it's unlike anything Pixar have ever really done before. And the legacy behind this film is just absolutely huge. I mean, the four Toy Story films speak for themselves and they played a huge part in the general genre of animation and a lot of childhoods and, you know, in some cases, parenthoods of a lot of people around the world throughout the past near 30 years. And this one looks like it could add a few pieces to the puzzle, while at the same time I thought to myself, it's an idea that I didn't think needed to happen as such, but I thought it will be interesting to see what they do and how they will take the series. So as I said, Lightyear is about the film character that inspired the toy of Buzz Lightyear that Andy had for his birthday. And Lightyear is the journey of Buzz and his commanding officer slash best friend who are exploring a habitable planet. But after failing to complete a hyperspace test, he discovers that time has gone by on this planet and it's been left in hostile ruin. So it's up to Buzz and his team to find their way back to civilization while being threatened by Emperor Zerg, another character who serves as the origin source for the creation of the toy that we see in Toy Story 2 and a little bit in Toy Story 3. So there's quite a lot of context in terms of production and narrative that's very, very unusual and very different than anything that we've seen from Pixar before. And I go back to the title card that reveals the origin behind it. As interesting as it is to explain the story with text just on the screen, which will allow the audience to imagine for themselves, I equally want to see it. I want to see the context of it because we still got that in the previous Toy Story installments, particularly in the second and third film, and also the fourth one as well. And that's what I think sets up the premise of the film. I think they missed a trick in that respect to connect it further to the Toy Story series by not including a prologue about Andy and purchasing Buzz etc where it would go full circle very early into the film. Equally at the same time I think it's something that was used to just kind of separate it from that while also still being part of it. Like it is also quite a rare film for Pixar because it's actually one of the few science fiction films that they've actually made. The last one being Wally back in 2008. We know how well that film did, so it was inevitable that in Lightyear we were going to get some dazzling visual effects. It was absolutely stunning, as you would expect. And although it wasn't going to be this authentic film about science and technology, it still had some kind of touch within the story that made the audience kind of feel that they understood particularly the relationship between space and time. I know there's obviously multiple, multiple theories about that, but I just think it gives the younger audience a little bit of perspective as to how large the universe is and, you know, how much time can go by. But also the realisation, and I know a lot of Pixar films have shown this before, that our lives are for a limited amount of time. So in terms of the story, it does jumble a lot between being like Interstellar, The Martian, and like a space version of Top Gun. So the Lightyear does have its fun and entertainment factors, and it does try to create emotion and drama, which Pixar have been famous for for years, and create a message but I just don't think that was there. It almost felt like it was kind of half finished in my opinion. And it just didn't quite seal it for me. It fell short emotionally, I would say, but it still had its fun and entertaining factor as well. When you look at the scale of what Lightyear could have been and what I'm talking about with it being only half finished is that it could have been more than just one film. It didn't have to just wrap up there. They could have expanded it even more into like a trilogy almost. And when you've got a story like Lightyear that does have some scientific elements in it, it's almost like an endless loop where you can just expand it even more as you release more films. But as entertaining and fun as it was, it was quite predictable at the best of times where 
you did know what was coming where you weren't surprised or you weren't shocked. So I think that's another reason why this fell short. And it's a tough one because I'm trying to take it a lot more seriously because it's, you know, an origin story about Buzz Lightyear. The Toy Story films mean the world. And, you know, I just love those films and I love the Buzz Lightyear character. People were thinking to themselves initially, why is Tim Allen not returning as Buzz? The fact is, it's not the same Buzz Lightyear. And it's not just because Tim Allen isn't playing Buzz because this time he's voiced by Chris Evans. But it's just the feeling that we get from from the character while also having some similarities that help remind us that it is the inspiration for the toy. And it's quite a coincidence actually that Chris Evans voices Buzz Lightyear in this film because he's also very well known for playing a character whose life has been altered completely because of time and losing loved ones and for also being in a special group. Of course I'm talking about Captain America slash Steve Rogers. So I think maybe to a degree he was actually typecast for this role and I did like his vocal portrayal of the character because as many human characteristics as we got from the original toy there were some human elements to this character as well that made us kind of feel that it was the Buzz Lightyear character who Andy would have watched and loved when he was a child. And also it's his relationship with Alicia Hawthorne that's key to the film too. I mean she's a groundbreaking character for other reasons too which is absolutely fantastic to see. Now a character who I did really like in this film was of course Socks which is this technological cat that serves as a companion to Buzz throughout his mission. In fact watching Socks reminded me a lot of Baymax from Big Hero 6 due to his robotic voice while also having a personality. And while I wouldn't say that this is exactly a comedy it was Socks who practically carried the humour. He did this through certain jokes of how people perceive cats and how they just generally behave. But it also makes me wonder at the same time though, why a cat when he could have been literally anything? He could have been a monkey, he could have been a dog, he could have been a lion, he could have been anything at all. I think it's just, you know, a marketing factor to make people think, oh, I want one of those now. A bit like Groot in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, really. You know, when people think, oh, he's cute. You know, I really want one of those. And to be fair, I fell for that. And I want my own socks now. So I think he's actually the best character in the film. And I bet if Andy had watched that film in 1995, he would have loved socks a whole lot more than Buzz. As well as Buzz, we also saw the introduction of Emperor Zurg and how he became the origin of the toy that we saw in the other Toy Story films. And Lightyear was an opportunity to give the character to of Zerg a bit more context and more of an explanation as to where he came from and why he was created as a toy. And I feel as though the character of Zerg in general is inspired by Darth Vader, not just because of the reference from Toy Story 2, I just think because of the suit and the helmet and all those things, it just reminds me that this character has something within him and you know has a past and that's what I think this was an opportunity to explore. And when you watch this film you'll know what I mean. I kind of was a bit underwhelmed and a little bit disappointed by it really that it wasn't really him as an individual there wasn't really that much of an insight into the character as good as he was regarding you know the action sequences and it looked so intimidating it's just the character that just kind of wasn't there when the third act came i'm not going to give too much away but that's just what i thought of it so like is a huge film anyway because since the start of the pandemic it's the first Pixar film to have been released in the cinema. And because of the huge legacy surrounding it, it seemed too good an opportunity to miss this in the cinema. And I'm glad we did. It was a film that was just simply fun and entertaining. And while it didn't necessarily go to infinity and beyond, it was still a valuable contribution to the Toy Story franchise. It's certainly on its own for being a film within a film. And if Pixar have made a spin-off about Buzz Lightyear, why not do a Woody one about Woody's Roundup, like a TV series, or just a solo Western film, like what we got in the prologue of Toy Story 3? So what did you think of Lightyear? Did you enjoy it? Did you think it was a good contribution to the Toy Story series? Or did you think it was a bit of a daft idea and it didn't quite work out? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you did want to enjoy this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more and have a notification bell ticked so you're notified when I upload a new video and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care everybody.